Technology is part of everyday life, but how beneficial is it to children? We find out next. Welcome to Mat Time, where we talk about all things early childhood. Today we're discussing popular uses children make of technology and how we can build on these in an early learning setting. We've enlisted the help of one of Australia's leading experts in children and technology, Dr Joanne Orlando. Welcome Joanne to Mat Time. Thank you, hello. Well, we're so excited to have you here. Uh, it's such a relevant topic for all of our viewers. So, should we just get straight into it? Could you tell us a bit about how the use of technology has changed in recent years at home and in particular with children? Yeah, well, probably many people would have noticed that children's use of technology at home has gone absolutely through the roof, particularly with young children. Um, so the latest stats show something like about 75% of children eight years and younger are using technology at home on a regular basis. So when you say technology, they're using uh, tablets like iPads, you know, little mobile devices, and then also using things like their parents' smartphone. Um, and then when we look at the much younger children, two years and younger, it's about something like 40 to 50% of those children, very young children, are also accessing technology on a regular basis. Yeah, it's a huge difference to how it was about four or five years ago. And it's mobile devices that have made this big shift for children. It's been a real game changer as far as how often they go on and what they do on there. Right, and so tell us what, what are they doing at home with technology? How are they using it? Yeah, well, there's a few things. Um, one of the, I've been able to do a study just recently. I've been into families' homes, a lot of families' homes, and I spend time in there talking to the children, talking to the parents, the siblings, um, spending time watching children using technology. And I've been focusing on children 12 and younger, but mostly just on the rear, on very young children, eight and under. And what I'm finding at home is that a lot of children from about the age of three seem to own their own device. A trend that I see is emerging in families' homes is that that child's first birthday seems to be a time when a lot of children are now uh, getting a mobile device, such as an iPad, for their birthday present. So that is a huge, huge difference. It has massive implications in terms of what we do in early childhood centres. So if you could tell me a bit about, you know, the way that children are using technology in the home, is it all beneficial to their learning and development in the long run? Yeah, they're using it in a range of ways and there's a lot of benefit in there as well. So I've been able to categorise it into five different ways that children use technology at home. So one is watching videos, which they seem to really love. So that might be on YouTube or, uh, you know, Netflix, something like that. Um, they often use an, uh, an app or a site to learn something. So watching, say, a YouTube clip where someone's showing you how to draw and then copying what they're doing and drawing the same picture. Or maybe playing an educational app or game. Um, a lot of children use technology to communicate and it's often with a family member who's not in the home. So, for example, I had this uh, young child, she was about six, and her grandmother lived in England. And every couple of weeks, they would have a cooking session together while they were video chatting. So they'd be on video chat, and the grandmother and uh, would have worked out what they're going to cook that day. Oh. And together, the child and the grandmother would be cooking. You know, brilliant, lovely experience. Um, but, you know, in its essence, it's a communication experience. Children are also using... The, their devices to search for information. So it might be finding out about their favourite animal, something like that. And finally, um, a, an activity that seemed to branch across all of those was working with or representing an idea. So maybe taking a photo or taking a video or drawing on their screen. So we've talked obviously a lot about you know how children are using technology at home, but how can we incorporate this into an early learning setting? Well, I'll talk about some of the learning like some specific ways children are using and then the learning that I see. So, for example, I talked to one child who had just turned three and in my study she was showing me, um, she was telling me about her favourite video. So I said to her, well, how did you get to that video? So she got her tablet in her hand very confidently and into Google Voice Command, she said, okay, Google, I want to watch and whatever the name of the video. 
So she used her voice as keywords and put it into Google Voice commands. So up came the search list. There's written search list items down the bottom and up the top. There were images, different videos. She selected the image that she wanted and got onto her uh, video that she wanted to watch, her favorite video. Now this girl had just turned three. That took her 30 seconds to do, but there was an enormous amount of learning that happened in that very quick scenario. So that girl was using language confidently, she was using keywords, she was interpreting print and visual text, um, she was modifying her language so the way that she was talking to me was different to the way that she was using her voice in the Google Voice command. She was carrying out a number of complex instructions that involved a more than one step to get to the video that she wanted. But there's some language and literacy learning but then also you know she was collaborating um, with her brother who was next to her he wasn't doing anything she was doing all the work um, and she'd also been instructed by her mom you know a few weeks ago how to do that so she was following the instructions with her mom and collaboratively they had worked out how to do this but also this girl was very proud of what she did um, so in terms of her confidence her identity as a learner her independence her, the idea that you know if you try even though it might seem difficult you can do it so that whole experience was absolutely wonderful so I think one thing that we can take from that is that we know children are very capable but they're also very capable with technology but if we wanted to build on that I would build on that in the center by focusing on the child speaking confidently in a group working with another child making something and then explaining to the group how they made it. So really bringing out those great oral language skills and the ability to sequence language into steps so that it comes out in a, in a way that people can understand it. So a well-defined, well clear way. I think one of the great things about that for the child in terms of her own language and literacy learning is that she said these words and put them into Google but then Google comes up with all these images and, and text. So she actually gets to see her words turn into images and written language, which is a really powerful learning experience for a child who's understanding what language is and who's understanding what reading and writing is as well. So a great sort of, I, I think it's a, a great experience for children to be part of. And I think one that can be encouraged in, at the home and the centre. Um, but another thing that I've seen children do is they, they like to really create on their device. So things like Minecraft, there's lots of apps that allow a child to design and create. Um, so one of the things I think is great, I, I saw a child, she was really into designing buildings. So she was six. So designing these buildings and putting them into this app and she really, really enjoyed it. She, you can see she was really developing a love for architecture. Um, and one of the things that was really important for this child is that she said you no, know, she wouldn't do it on paper and pen because it would just take too long. She found it just too tiresome to do it like that. But on a screen, she found it really quick and easy and it, a lot less physically daunting for her as well. So I think we have to think of that idea too that a screen does offer that less physically um, taxing way of, of developing ideas for some children than opposed to using paper and pencil. And it doesn't mean that we wouldn't still encourage them to draw, it's just offering another choice for them in terms of another way or another um, platform they might actually work with ideas. And that's really important. That's one of the great things about technology, that it just offers another option. Thank you so much, Dr. Joanna Lando. You've given us some really incredible insights there into, into the world of technology and children and, and definitely some applicable ideas for, for the educators as well to help enrich that experience between yeah, child and technology. So Joanne, in wrapping up, is there anything that you'd like to say to those watching at home? Yeah, I would actually. Uh, one of our priorities in early childhood is to build on children's knowledge and interests. And we know children are making, you know, quite a lot of use of technology at home and building a lot of interest, not just in the technology, but in the content that they're engaging with. So in centres and schools, 
we also want to ensure that we build on that knowledge and that interest around technology. It shouldn't be something that we just leave off the list because it's very important to a lot of children. And it's a great insight into understanding who they are as learners as well um, and their capabilities. Fantastic. Thank you, Joanne. Thanks for watching Matt Time. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more.